Now we're taking a little turn into the great state of New York. The Empire State, home to Broadway, home to the greatest and only really baseball team ever in the world, the New York Yankees, 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 Yankees. The governor is Kathy Hochul, who ran and got elected on the Democrat ticket. But I guess people who know her when she was lieutenant governor said that she's very conservative and she's really a Republican because she's from upstate New York, which is very conservative. And she's sort of proving that she's not this great liberal that Democrats who voted for her thought she was to be. One sort of issue that's going on is she nominated a very conservative judge to run and be in charge of the high court in New York State. He is a I guess, anti-abortion, anti-woman, and for some reason she nominated him, and he didn't get out of committee, and the governor, instead of just finding someone middle of the road or maybe a little bit liberal to appease the people who voted for her and the people who are represented in the legislature of New York State, but no, she didn't. She has instead decided to sue the committee for not promoting the person that she picked to the, the full legislature so the full legislature can vote on this person that nobody wants. It's a bizarre fight to try to take up. Sometimes as a politician, you make the wrong decision. You miscalculate. And you have to go back and fix it. And she's not fixing it. She's picking a fight, which is not going to end well for her. Well, here's another really, really interesting thing. In New York State, there is a Commission for the Blind. They do fantastic work. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of resources. And it's because blind people need a lot of resources. They need a lot of help. A lot of them can't work. They certainly can't drive a car. They can't get around. Easily, they need help, they need home assistance, they need group homes. It's very expensive in many ways to be blind wherever you live. But New York State, traditionally, has taken care of the less fortunate and the disabled. So, there was a bill recently introduced in New York State that would create, in the spirit of the Commission for the Blind, a commission for, of, the deaf, deaf blind, and hard of hearing. It would be a whole state commission dedicated to hearing loss. Now there's the Commission for the Blind, which takes care of eyesight loss. So the deaf community thinks, and other supporters of that community say, why not have a commission for the deaf? Of the deaf. And what's interesting is, is this commission is going to take care of the deaf blind, which I thought was sort of handled in some ways by the commission for the blind, but maybe it's better that it just goes over it to the commission of the deaf so the deaf blind are served because they are a very, very specific disabled group. If you think that blind people are very expensive and need to be taken care of, the deaf blind are double that in every way. In disability, in inability to provide, and how they need to be taken care of. Not only can they not see where they're going, they cannot hear anything either. And many of them rely on tactile sign language or some the interpreter or the person puts their hand on the signer and then the signing. It's a very, very intense experience. So there's this bill establishes the commission of the deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing 
requires the commission of the deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing to transmit complaints and matters affecting the deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing communities to the vulnerable portions central register. Repeals provisions relating to the New York State Interagency Coordinating Council for services to persons who are deaf, deaf, blind, or hard of hearing. Okay, so this is the bill, the full text of the bill that explains everything. State of New York in assembly. This is in March of 2021. And it was voted, I believe, 67 to none in the New York legislature. All in favor, every single person, not one dissenter. We want a commission of the deaf, of the deaf blind, of the hard of hearing in New York State. And Kathy Hochul, who ran on the Democrat ticket, on November 23 of 2022, vetoed the bill. Even though the people want it, even though the legislator voted for it, 67 to nothing, the governor, for reasons she will not explain, voted against the best interests of the deaf, the deaf-blind, and the hard of hearing in New York State. What kind of monster is that? We're surrounded by monsters. And they get elected to positions of power and you believe in them and you put your heart and faith in them and they turn around and do the wrong thing. Even when everyone around them is encouraging them to do the right thing. They think they know better. So it took from March 26, 2021 until the end of November to get an answer on the commission of the deaf in New York State. It's a disappointing and disgusting tragedy that should not be calmly abided. And here's why. A week or so ago, a missing deaf mute woman found in New York City after living on the subway for three weeks. Now, we don't call deaf people deaf mutes anymore. We say deaf and does not speak. But hey, it's the New York Post, so what do you expect? They're not going to be kind. It's not even politically correct. It's just being accurate. <laughs> Who expects the New York Post to be accurate in their reporting? The deaf, mute, and autistic woman who vanished after getting released from a Queens hospital, released on Christmas Eve, was found on Saturday and survived by living on the subways for three weeks. Now, my beautiful wife, Jenna Marie Sweetheart, has a friend, had a friend, she worked with at an agency. And I think for almost a year, this friend, before he was employed, lived on the subway. And that is sort of where the homeless live in New York City, especially in the wintertime, because it's shelter. You can get on a train and sit there and change trains and sit there and sleep and try to survive. And I guess that the most popular train for the homeless to use in New York City is the E-train. It's a big train, beautiful train, and the unique part of it is of all the trains in New York City, the E-train is the one train that never goes outside. All the other trains either go up elevated on a bridge, on a platform, on an elevated track. But the E-Train is completely underground, which means in the wintertime, it's safe and warm. And in the summertime, it's safe and cool. So a deaf 
woman who does not speak, does not communicate, who is autistic, was released from the hospital on Christmas Eve to find her way home. I guess. Samantha Christmas's sister gives Lane Christmas and two Good Samaritans located the missing woman at the Bowling Green Station in Lower Manhattan after getting a tip. She was riding the one train. My heart fell, said the sister. Samantha was dehydrated, 10 pounds lighter, and had swollen feet. She was wearing slippers and a pair of socks in this cold, and she survived jumping from train to train, looking and hoping that she was going to get home. And we found her. So you have this woman sent home from the hospital. Doesn't know her address, doesn't know where to go. Can't really ask anybody around her because she does not speak, is deaf, autistic. So she's just getting on any train that she can see because maybe that will be the train that takes her home and she'll recognize the neighborhood. Samantha left her sister Joanna Peck's Elmont house where she was staying for the holidays early December 23 in an effort to find her way back to her mother's house in Brooklyn. That evening, a bystander in Queens found the woman lying on the ground in 18 degree weather in apparent need of help. An EMS took her to Queens, College, Queens Hospital, but the staff let the deaf and nonverbal woman Thank you. Walk back out at 2 a.m. Hey, it's Jana Marie. Hi, Jana Marie. She says it's terrible. They didn't think twice before dismissing her from the hospital. It's sad she was alone at the train. It's terrible. And Jana's friend who used to live on the train then got a job. He was a performer, a drag performer. And then in the early Days of AIDS, where people didn't know what it was. He got AIDS and died. Now that's a life. To be deaf, homeless, live on a subway, get a good job. And then AIDS takes you out. So EMS took the woman. Reed's Hospital dismissed her at 2 a.m. And you know why I'm guessing? And the temperature was 7 degrees. And they gave her a list of homeless shelters. And this woman, I know they dismissed her because they couldn't communicate with her. No interpreters available on December 23rd. She doesn't read. She doesn't write. Which should have been a clue. Hey, we can't just release her into the night dressed like that, we need to hold her and take care of her because we are a hospital. But instead, they gave her a list of homeless shelters, a list that I'm sure she could not read or understand, and kicked her out of the hospital. That is her. If they had done their duty, my sister would not have gone through these horrendous three weeks on a train in the cold. An apology is not enough. The family is now pursuing legal action against the hospital, claiming the hospital neglected to take proper care in discharging the disabled woman, and the hospital is now refusing to give them information. Of course, this is going to be very bad for the hospital. If the Nassau County Police report is accurate, then clearly this hospital was not only negligent, but heartless. An appropriate legal action will be instituted. The city has to be held accountable for the actions of those who work at the hospital. Now, if we had a commission for the deaf, deafblind, who I know would be in charge of this sort of Policy in city, 
state hospitals, interventions, emergency phone numbers to call. This might have been avoided. Now, this was in the New York Post, right? Conservative newspaper owned by Rupert Murdoch, who runs Fox News. This is a touching, wonderful story and a heartbreaking story. And the comments on this story, which is why I'm not showing you the original article. This is a saving of the article that I did. The comments on that article were blistering and cruel. None of them support the deaf, autistic woman who was abandoned by a hospital. They all blame the family. Oh, if the family wasn't on welfare, you know she wasn't paying her way. If she had insurance, she would have been kicked out in the cold. Who are we to pay? I mean, vicious, vicious, nasty stuff. And those are the people who are praying for and counting on Donald Trump in 20 and 24. Deaf migrants in New York City to lose in-person sign language interpreters. This also goes straight to the heart of blame on the governor of New York City. Because the governor of New York City controls the subways and controls policy. The, the governor of New York can overrule anything that the mayor of New York City does. The governor can intervene. Do we have a commission of the deaf? No. Would a commission of the deaf in New York have perhaps helped resolve this next story? Absolutely. Deaf migrants in New York City to lose in-person language interpreters. From the Gothamists. At least five deaf Venezuelan migrants staying at the Watson Hotel, turned shelter in Midtown, were told on Sunday they would no longer have access to sign language interpreters. Now, I don't know how you can get away with even saying that word. You're deaf, you're here, you're under our care, but we're not going to communicate with you, and sign language interpreters are too expensive, so you don't get one. <laughs> that is why New York State needs a commission for the deaf. Since November, they've had two interpreters, one to translate from Venezuelan sign language to ASL, and another to convert ASL to spoken English. But the administrators told them they'll have to use remote interpreting services through an iPad starting next week. The move comes as they prepare to move into a new shelter for migrants at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal in the Red Hook area next week. Now people say, oh, you know, virtual interpreting is great. You can, hospitals use it. Yeah, I mean, it's workable, but not ideal. And it's not always 24-7 on call. Once I lose access to information, then I'm not going to know what's happening which will then not only sideline me, but can also affect my immigration application status, said Freddie, a 35-year-old deaf migrant from Venezuela who said through an interpreter he asked not to use his last name because of privacy concerns. A spokesperson for the New York City Health and Hospital System said the move to virtual sign language interpretation is unrelated to the opening of the Red Hook facility and that all the emergency relief shelters for migrants will use digital services for deaf asylum seekers moving forward. While staying at the temporary tent facility set up for asylum seekers on Randall's Island last year, Freddie said shelter staff disciplined him for recording shelter-wide announcements. The city shelters have a no recording policy. But <laughs> once workers realized that Freddie was sending those recordings to his mother in Venezuela so she could translate and interpret the messages back to him, they got him an interpreter. 
It's taking us longer because of our deafness, he said. We have more barriers to overcome, which is disheartening, but we are not giving up. Our goal is to work. On his way to church on Sunday, Freddie pulled back his collar to reveal a constellation of scars from his migration. A treacherous journey that he said required him to stretch one can of tuna to last five days. So this is another stain on Kathy Hochul. New York State needs a commission of the deaf, of the deafblind, of the hard of hearing. And so you may ask, what does Kathy Hochul, governor of New York City, value? Of all the things in the world that she could support, that have to do with the human condition and helping make New York a better place for everyone to live and not a select few. Well, I'll show you one thing. She loves football. Kathy Hochul, upstate New Yorker, loves the Buffalo Bills. And she's buying them a new stadium. Ahead of a meeting on Monday, State releases more details on Bill's stadium deal and a community benefits agreement. Ahead of a meeting on Monday afternoon concerning the Buffalo Bills stadium deal, the state has released the meeting's agenda and materials, which provide further details about some of the aspects of the $1.4 billion project. Jana Marie says, hi, Jana Marie. The stadium is more important than people, according to Kathy. Absolutely. Football number one. Deaf immigrants, deaf people on the subway for three weeks, forget them. I don't need a commission for the deaf. Let them suffer. I have a Buffalo Bills football game to attend. Annual stadium costs. Beyond the upfront $1.4 billion design and construction costs of the new stadium, documents also provide a detailed breakdown of the annual funding required over the course of a 30-year lease. Annual payments would be used by the bills to maintain and repair the facility. <laughs> With the funds directed into two categories, capital improvement and fund repair. In year one of the lease, which is expected to be 2026. Total payments to the Capital Improvement Fund will be $10.9 million. For the Capital Improvement Fund, the state of New York that refuses to fund a commission of the deaf will fund the Buffalo Bills $6 million annually. The county pays four million and the bill's rent would make up nine hundred thousand dollars of it. The, co the total cost of the capital improvement fund over the life of the lease is estimated to be three hundred twenty seven million dollars with one hundred eighty million dollars coming from the state. One hundred twenty million dollars from Erie County and twenty seven million coming from the bill's lease payments. As for the Repair and Maintenance Fund, which would be used by the bills for capital improvements, maintenance and other repairs needed for stadium upkeep would be funded annually for 15 years by the state at a cost of $6.7 million a year. That means the total cost of the Maintenance Repair Fund for those 15 years is about $100 million. So that's big government at work for you, right? Football over people. And it's going to be an enclosed stadium. So the big advantage that the Bills have had with the snow and the cold and the weather, just like Minnesota Vikings used to have before they got a new stadium, now it's gone. Now everybody plays indoors because that's where the money is. That's where the suites are. People don't want to wear their heavy coats. They want to wear light 
coats and jeans and have a perfect temperature of 72 degrees at game time, even when it's minus 40 outside. And this is the proposed agenda that I'll put this link in our Discord server on discord.gg forward slash B-O-L-E-S and leak in live links related to the show. This breaks it all down where all the money is going so Kathy Holtrell can keep the bills in New York State and forget about the deaf and the disabled. Those people you can throw away. They're throwaway people. They don't vote. They don't have any money. They don't do concessions. Who needs a live interpreter? Let everything be virtual. And this is the state of the world in which we live, where decisions matter. The monsters we allow into our lives again and again have ramifications. And usually it has nothing directly to do with the monster. But, as I said before, what the monster enables other people to do in the name of the monster. And it's not good for the people.